Hello friends, this video on light part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now look at the image formation by concave mirror in detail. So we will see how different types of images are formed by a concave mirror. So just to remind you what is concave, cave means something which goes inside. So the inside surface is going to be the mirror. So your object is going to be somewhere here. So this is how the concave mirror would look like. So let's say this is your concave mirror and this is your, I'm sorry, this is your concave mirror as you can see here. So this is your concave mirror and this is your object and this is the image. Now you might ask that why are we seeing the image here? Because what kind of image is formed here? If you see the object is also on this side of the mirror, the image is also formed on the same side. So that's the speciality here. Right? So since the object and the image both are formed on the same side of the mirror, so we can actually get this image on the screen. So basically you can try this experiment out in your home or in your laboratory wherever you have a concave mirror available. So with that concave mirror you place an object. So here I have placed a flower vase at a considerable distance from the mirror. And then you put a screen on the same side of the mirror. So that screen could be anything. It could be uh, a piece of cloth or it could be a sheet of paper. So just have that screen there and you will see that you will be able to see the image there and the image would be diminished. That is it is smaller in size than the object. So if you see here, image is smaller and the image is also inverted. So you see that that's quite evident that the image is inverted. Now, we will start seeing the magic of the concave mirror, you know, when when we start changing the position of the object. So now what we have done is, so what we do is we try to change the distance of the object from the mirror. So for that, what you can do is you can either change, I mean, you can either move the object from one position to other, or you can also change the position of the screen because as you move the screen also, so effectively the distance between distance of the image from the mirror changes, which in turn changes the object distance also from the mirror because the entire calculation changes. Now we are not getting into the calculations at this level. What I'm trying to show is as the distance changes, as the position changes, the type of image also changes. So here we observe that when the object is brought even more closer to the mirror, the image is still inverted but now the image is of the same size as that of the object. And do you know what is this position of the object? Now at this point of time, I already gave you a brief introduction of uh, different terms related to a spherical mirror. So I spoke about the center of curvature. You remember C. So center of curvature is that is the center of the sphere from which that mirror is being derived. So when this object is located at the center of curvature of this mirror, so the center of curvature, this mirror is like we are seeing it from the back side, right? So this mirror will have some center of curvature which will be somewhere here. And when the object is placed at the center of curvature, at that time, the image which is formed is of the same size, but it is inverted, right? Now what we do, we try to bring the object even more closure and gradually we see that now we are getting an enlarged image. So instead of same size, now the image has become all the more magnified. So the image is bigger than the size of the object. And if we even try to bring it very close to the mirror, let's say if you bring, you bring the object extremely close to the mirror, what do, what do you observe? So now you do not see the screen here. You know why? Because in this case, the object is on this side, the image is on the other side of the mirror. In this case, this is the mirror. So object is on this side of the mirror, image is also on this side of the mirror. So both are on the same sides. So you, you will be able to get the image on a screen. But when the image is formed on the other side of the mirror, like how it happens when we stand in front of the dressing table, we cannot get our image on a screen. So the same thing happens here. So basically when the object is brought extremely close to the concave mirror, the image that is formed that is erect. So you see, you see an erect image. 
However, you are not able to see the entire image of the object. That's because the image is enlarged. So the image is highly magnified. So you are only able to see some part of the image because the mirror is not that big. Correct. So what did we observe? We observed that with a concave mirror, with the same object, you can get enlarged image, you can get a diminished image, you can get image of the same size as that of the object, you can get inverted image, you can get erect image and all these changes with the position of the object from the mirror. So basically these are very simple experiments. In fact, these are just observations. So if you have a concave mirror, uh, near you, you can try this these out yourselves. So which will help you to know that, okay, so that's the beauty of spherical mirrors. And because of this property, the spherical mirrors are used in a wide variety of applications. So overall, if you look at all the four scenarios that we discussed, we saw that at a certain position of the object, the image was diminished, inverted, then gradually it became of the same size, still inverted, then it became enlarged, still inverted, and finally it became erect and enlarged. So can you tell me, based on whatever I have explained before, can you tell me in which of these scenarios the image is real and in which of the scenarios the image is virtual. Now what is a real image? I told you that real image is formed when the reflected rays actually meet and a virtual image is formed when the reflected rays appear to meet. So that is the basic uh, way to define real image and vir virtual image. But what are the other ways to identify which image is real image and which image is virtual? So another way is whenever you have a real image, so that real image can always be obtained on the screen because the real image is always formed on the same side as that of the object because the reflected rays are actually meeting. So when they are actually meeting, that means they are meeting on the same side as that of the object. Now in all of these cases, you see the images are formed on the same side of the object and that is why we are able to get them on the screen. So these are all real images. However, in this case, the image cannot be obtained on a screen because it is formed on the other side of the mirror and it, it is formed on the other side because the rays did not meet actually. So we just, I mean, uh, we just assumed that if we uh, try to meet them, it try to make them meet somehow using dotted lines so they will be able to meet somewhere on the other side of the mirror. So this is the scenario where a virtual image is formed. So I hope that the concept of real image, virtual image, all these things should be very clear because this is where from where you start learning the basics of optics. So as you go to your senior classes, you will study about these same things, but in more detail. So let's have a quick review of image formation by concave mirrors. So here you see we have made a list of object location where now these are the points where the object will be located. So these are the point places where the image will be formed and what type of image will be formed and what would be the size of the image. Now when you go to your senior classes, you will actually calculate and see that how the images are formed at these locations. So that is not required at this level. However, we have, we, you can always verify this table with the observations like whatever we discussed in the last two slides. So when the object is located at infinity, when the object is very far away from the mirror, then the image is formed at the principal focus and the image is real inverted and it is smaller in size. Now when the object is beyond the center of curvature, so it is like, let's, let's say, uh, let's take a mirror like this. Let's say this is the mirror. So this is our concave mirror, okay? And this is the principal axis of the mirror. Let's say this is the pole, this is the focus, and let's call this as the center of curvature. So in the first scenario, we assume that the object is like at infinity, somewhere very far. So in that case, the image will be formed at the focus here. So the image is formed here because the reflected rays would actually meet at this point. Now when the object is beyond C, somewhere here, if this is where the object is, then the image would be formed somewhere between C and F. And here also the image would be inverted, small in size and of course real because see on the same side of the mirror. 
when the object is at C at this point, then the image will also be formed at the center of curvature, but this would be inverted and it will be same size as that of the object. So you see, as the object is coming closer to the mirror, the size of the image is actually increasing. You see, the object is gradually coming closer from infinity to beyond center of curvature to center of curvature. So now we say that the object is between center of curvature and focus. So in that case, the image is formed beyond the center of curvature, but here the image is gradually Gradually increasing in size. So as we are going down, the object is coming closer to the mirror and the size of the object is gradually increasing. And finally, when we reach between focus and pole, so when the object is somewhere here, then the image that is formed is enlarged and it is formed on the other side of the mirror. So something like this would be formed on the other side of the mirror. So this is the like uh, the overview of how different images are formed in concave mirrors when the objects are object is located at different places. So in a similar way, let us look at the image formation by convex mirror. Now in convex mirror, what happens? It is a diverging mirror. So in this case, we observe that always erect and diminished images are formed irrespective of the location of the object. So this also you can try out on your own. Now, even if you keep changing the position of the object, take it to infinity, bring it very close to the mirror. So every time you will see an erect image and every time you will see a diminished image that is an image which is smaller in size and can you tell me what kind of image is this real or virtual of course virtual why because the image is formed on the other side of the mirror right so this is a virtual image so basically a convex mirror is used in all those places where we need a diminished image so wherever we need a smaller image uh, an image which is smaller in size as that of the compared to the object so there we will use convex mirror because for convex mirror doesn't matter where the object is located every time it will give an erect and diminished image so now can you guess what kind what kind of spherical mirror is used in the rear view mirrors of your car because that rear view mirror gives a um, view of the entire uh, scene at the background so even if a huge truck is standing at behind your car you will be able to see that entire truck in that small mirror how are you able to see it because a diminished image is being formed in the mirror so i am pretty sure that you must have been able to guess which type of mirror is present in the rear back view mirrors of your car so this is how you need to learn so now try observing different types of uh, mirrors which you see around yourself and by observing the type of images which are produced by those mirrors you can guess what kind of mirror is that so basically, if we quickly review the image formation of convex mirrors, we see that, okay, the whenever the object is located, doesn't matter whether the object is located at infinity, which is very far, or anywhere between the pole and the infinity, whether at the center of curvature or the focus, or between focus and pole, doesn't matter wherever it is located. So every time the image would be virtual and erect, and every time the image would be diminished. It is just that if the image is going far away, the image will keep becoming all the more diminished. So that's why we say if the object is at infinity, then the image will be highly diminished. And if the object is quite near, even then the image is going to be diminished, but comparatively less diminished. But every time you will get a diminished virtual and erect image with a convex mirror. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.